Hello, today's video is four stories on the deep web from Reddit's No Sleep. Some of these stories may be a little disturbing, so if you don't like being disturbed, you may want to leave now. If not, continue watching and enjoy. One of the hottest trends on YouTube right now is ordering random mystery boxes from complete strangers on the deep web and opening them up in front of a camera. I don't know why I didn't realize a clear majority of these were fake and staged for the scare factor, but I didn't. I thought it was a great idea and hopped on the bandwagon to claim my YouTube stardom that I desperately longed for. For those who do not know a lot about the deep web, it's simply a part of the internet that isn't accessible from your basic Chrome, Firefox, or Explorer search engines. You must download the encryption program Tor and the Tor browser for starters. It's not illegal to access this part of the internet, but since this is anonymous, a great deal of illegal actions happened here. The possibilities are endless. So I grab my laptop I've had since I graduated in 2011 and download the required programs. I prefer to use my laptop over my desktop in case of any viruses and such. My seven year old laptop is a little bit more disposable. I had a little Bitcoin phase a few years ago when it was blowing up, so I had a little saved already, but it wasn't much, only one Bitcoin, which translates roughly $632. But it was enough for what I was looking for. After the downloads were finished, I opened the browser and started my journey at the hidden wiki website. They provided a lot of useful links to get started on the deep web. I scrolled through the warnings and gist of what it was and found the links I was looking for. Almost forgot, I muttered to myself as I grabbed the duct tape from my desk drawer. I cut a tiny square piece off and placed it over my webcam. Call me paranoid, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I clicked one of the first links and waited for what seemed like forever for the page to load. It was a very plain page with a list of popular websites that you could scroll through on the side. I continued to search through the web links until I found a page dedicated for mystery boxes. I wanted to find one around 500 bucks so people knew I meant business on my channel. These were relatively small, staying around less than half of Bitcoin range. I was worried about being scammed, so I decided to continue my search after a quick bathroom break. When I came back, I noticed the cursor was off to the side and was able to click on a link that must have matched my background color of the web page because I couldn't see it. In my curious state, I hit the link. I was taken to a pitch black page with a small white text near the top. I'm selling one random package to any brave enough to receive it for only 0.12 Bitcoin. Only one, huh? I thought to myself, I'll shoot my shot. I hit the small payment button and when I was asked how much I would like to spend, I entered 0.1 Bitcoin with my fingers crossed. The payment went through without any hesitation and I was instantly met in a chat box asking where I'd like my package sent. I know it wasn't a good idea and I regret it to this day, but the other YouTube channels used their own addresses often, so I thought nothing of it and I gave them my home address. I waited over a month for the box to come in, 36 days to be exact. It finally arrived directly on my front porch and was wrapped numerous times in red tape. I set up my camera on the tripod and adjusted it to show me and the box on the small wooden table. I draped a sheet in the background so it looked more professional. I collected some gloves and scissors so I could bang the video out in one go. Hey everyone, welcome to tonight's vlog. Boy do I have a surprise for you. I continued my open monologue, mentioning how I got the box and how much I paid. Without wasting further time, let's open this deep web mystery box. I grab the scissors and cut along the red tape. I make sure my gloves are tight and I rip the box open. My brow furrows as I see just one book. Without saying a word, I take out the book from the box. I was really pissed. I spent over $600 on a book. Well folks. Looks like we got us a dud. These pages better be made out of gold. The outside of the book was old and tattered. It smelled of mildew and mold. 
I cracked the book open to the first page and glanced over the contents. It's an old photo album. Smells old and rotten. Look at these pictures. Show the camera a view of the page contents. It has four pictures on the first page. All labeled by days. The first picture said day one. The second said day two and so on. The pictures were taken from an old Polaroid camera. There were pictures of airplanes, random suitcases, a couple of taxis and some pretty shady motels. I continued flipping through the pages. Every day was a different photo of nature or of cars or trains. Day 18 held the oldest photo yet. It was just of a mask, handcuffs, a gag, and a bottle of some sort of drugs it looked like. These people have one hell of a fetish. I was trying to keep the video interesting. I zoomed into the picture with the camera so that everyone could see it. Around day 32, things started getting weird. There's a picture of a house, but not just any house. It was a house I grew up in, my parents' house. My hand covered my mouth as I gasped for air. How was this? I was unable to form a sentence. I'm at a loss for words. Day 33. I turned the page to see a man and a woman handcuffed and gagged. I immediately expel the contents of my stomach as I see it's my own mom's scared and crying face and my dad, face first in a pile of what looked like black tar. Day 34. The photo was taken inside of what looks like a vehicle. I focus my gaze to the dashboard. It's an old school photo of me. They're in my dad's truck. Day 35. Another house, but one much smaller. The photo is too blurry to make out any details. My hands are trembling, and all I can hear is my heartbeat pounding in my ears. I flip to the last page. I immediately throw the book on the ground and run to the window. As I jiggle the hash frantically and throw it open, Without hesitation, I jump out and run to my neighbors. As I'm running, I turn around for a brief second. What I saw still haunts me to this day. A tall, hooded figure stood in my room, looking at me through the window. He stood there motionless, before lifting his hand and waving. I screamed for my neighbors, who hurried me inside and called the cops. I sat there and just cried. I cried out of fear for my life. I cried for my parents. I cried because it was all my fault. My lack of common sense got my parents killed, and I will have to live with that forever. If you access the deep web, do not release your personal information, even if people on YouTube do it. Most of it's not real. I need to buy myself off the deep web before someone else does. I don't know how much time I have. I saw the offer an hour ago. The only thing I can tell you is how I happened upon myself. It's stupid really. Really, really, really stupid. I was trying to impress my friends. We were all enrolled in IT classes at our school. We would take turns seeing who could bring the most messed up stuff we could find. It started out with showing our friends websites on the deep web people could buy drugs from. Drugs that we've never heard of. That got boring real quick. Other friends began upping their content and trying to stand out in the game of I'm more tech savvy than you. Every time it was more disgusting and gruesome than the last. Pictures of people dying. People being tortured in unimaginable ways. People that were already dead. One person brought up a child porn site. A child porn snuff site. Instead of people saying exactly how messed up that was and how this should all stop, and how we should never begin this stuff in the first place, and how stupid it was, and how much danger we were in. They congratulated her, gave her a pat on the back, asked her how she could even sit in her chair properly, with how big her balls were. I felt like vomiting. I felt like beating the living shit out of everybody. That didn't believe how messed up it was finding child stuff porn on the internet, and treating it as an accomplishment. I didn't say anything though. They began to notice that I've never showed off anything myself. Pussy slowly became a new nickname at school. School became a living hell for me. My friends began shoving these horrible pictures in my face whenever they could. When I cried and vomited, they claimed they were trying to desensitize me. 
but everything became too much. I promised myself I wouldn't venture too deep, that I would only stay long enough to find something that would appease them all. At this point, we were long past the point of finding cool drugs or what else. I knew I had to find something that would hold importance. At this point, I had been on the deep web for about three hours. Five hours was what it took to put an offer for me on the deep web. At one point, I remember opening a seemingly blank web page. Immediately, the light next to my computer flashed on briefly, five or so seconds. I minimized my browser and closed the photo booth, only to find that it wasn't even open. I didn't think anything of it. I was tired and had school the next day, so I closed everything and went to sleep. The next few days went the same as the last, until yesterday. When I walked in, everyone was huddled around one desk and talking in hushed voices. A few girls were crying, and all of them were pale and covered with sweat. I didn't want to see whatever was causing this reaction. Nobody noticed I'd walked in until after class had started. I caught several of them staring at me during the class. They had probably planned a new way to make me go home sobbing. I tried to leave class as quickly as I could, but one of them caught up with me, and by the shoulder, they spun me around. We need to talk. His voice quivered, and his clammy, trembling hands were soaking through my t-shirt. He led me to the back of the classroom with other students in the same shape as him. Everything I hear now is someone is out to get me. The only sick thing that comforts me is that all the pretty bitches that made me do this in the first place are going to sell quicker than me. I work for a huge company that brings down bad websites on the web. I can't reveal the name here, but I've been doing this for many years now. A few years ago, I discovered a group of red rooms called the five true red rooms on the deep web. Now, don't go lurking around trying to find this because you won't. The true red room cannot be accessed through Tor. If you try, you'll be setting yourself up for a shitty virus on your computer. I have been told that they're all scams. But rest assured, a few of them are not. It is very hard for an individual who doesn't understand the concept of the five red rooms to try to break in. Let's just say you'd have to know someone that runs one of them. It cannot be accessed through Tor. You have to have someone or be lucky enough to get a passcode to get into them. You have to be proven trustworthy. In this case, I gained the trust of someone who helped me moderate one. The true red rooms are a series of five rooms, sort of like doors. If you gain access to the first red room, you pay Bitcoin and show that you're serious and you just might get permission to access a second red room and so on. What are these evil live streams? I'll tell you. Here's the first true red room. I clicked on the first green. A black box appeared asking for my passcode. I typed it in. It was four numbers, a dash, and my username to access the site. Permission granted, it said. I was in. I thought it was too easy. On the first page was a bunch of black video boxes with titles. Some of them were titled, Watch Me Scare Kara or Tiffany gets spooked. I clicked on the watch me scare Kara. A man with what seemed to be a cell phone camera pointed it towards the front door. He was inside the home. It was like he was hiding behind the door. As I could see living room furniture, a nice leather love seat and bookshelves in the room. He whispers in a foreign language that I cannot understand. He never shows his face. Suddenly the doorknob is turning and I hear keys rattling. A girl in the green nurse's uniform with blonde hair and a tan comes in. She's petite looking. She's probably in her 20s. Suddenly I hear a man's voice scream, don't move. She freezes like a deer in headlights and screams, drops her keys, and the man in black and a black ski mask is running towards her with a giant hammer. Her arms go up. She screams and blocks him and he smacks her in the head twice with a hammer. She falls onto the ground as red blood pools up on the white carpet. She is completely knocked out. The man points to the man hiding behind the door and says what it sounds like to be done. Both cameras are shut off. If this was for real, it was the most disturbing thing I have ever seen. It didn't look fake at all. 
I don't know what happened next. I could only imagine. I didn't want to click the second video, but I did. The next video was Tiffany gets spooked. And it was even worse. This time, the camera zoomed into what looked like a park. A woman with brown hair and blue jogging suit is running laps around the track. The foreign sounding guy is sitting in what appears to be a car and I can see a cracked windshield. He is wearing black gloves, but it never shows his face. He is laughing and talking a little as a girl is still jogging. I wanted to yell to the poor girl, run away. Get out of the park, you're being stalked. But I realized there was nothing I could do. She wouldn't be able to hear me anyway. Suddenly the camera shuts off and I think the video is over. But I was wrong, very wrong. The video comes back on in what looks like night vision. It is green and a little choppy. I can see what looks like a bunch of pine trees around. Then I see what the camera is focusing on. A girl in what looks like a trunk and she is trying to scream. Her legs and arms are tied and bound and her mouth has a gag in it. It looks like the same girl from earlier in the blue jogging suit. She was barefoot. I can only see the black gloves and a hairy looking arm. It looked like the same guy from earlier in the video. He's in all black and is smoothing her hair back and the man holding the camera is telling her to calm down in English. She is crying. Then he begins to pull her body out of the trunk. He bumps her head by accident on the trunk lid. I feel relieved, thinking that it's just a joke and she would be okay. Suddenly I feel very sickened. I can't believe what they were going to do. The man in black with the black ski mask lays her on the ground and she gives up crying and screaming at this point. The camera zooms in on her face, the light going out in her eyes and all I can see is darkness. This poor girl has lost all hope. I want to cry. I fight back the tears. The men begin to tie her wrists to the bumper of the car. The cameraman still holding the camera. The other man gets into the car. I hear the engine roar. They were going to drag her behind it. But the video cuts off. When I was younger, I liked to window shop on the deep web. It wasn't anything serious. I just looked at the prices of various substances and how to get them delivered. That was my first exposure to the cryptocurrency. I wish I had never bought my first Bitcoin. There's a forum out there. I wish I could tell you it's dead and buried by now, but it isn't. I know because they're still tracking me. The first thread I read seems to be some kind of gambling action. Admins would take bets and users would place them. But the bets were not for sports or horse racing, not even cockfights. They were on suicides. Who would do it when and why? Who would push them over the edge? and be the one straw to break the camel's back. In order to place bets, I had to exchange Bitcoin for death coin. This process was difficult, very difficult for a kid in high school. But when I finally did, it was exhilarating. The person I chose was, at the time, another high schooler. Her name was Karen, and she was from the same small town I am, but we went to different schools. Once the bet was placed, I was delivered via PDF on her life. I knew her habits and routines. I knew how long it took her to wake up in the morning and how long it took her to go to sleep. I even knew her favorite color, which was blue. I bet that after a year of harassment, she would be in a wooden box six feet under. The admins would dedicate a thread to each victim for updates on their progress. And each victim had several field workers dedicated to them. They received the same info I did. The difference is that they went outside and put it to use. Field agents would covertly harass her in all ways. Graffiti directed at her, speaking about her within an earshot of her. And most daring agents broke into the house regularly. They didn't steal anything though. What they did was move furniture ever so slightly in the same direction for months. Needless to say, this brought her past the brink. Karen began hearing voices in her head and hearing things in her head and she couldn't distinguish them from those outside. They all told her the same thing. Kill yourself. Congratulations. 
Karen Walters was found dead this morning in her mother's car. The lucky winner is number 22830-5504. Attached to the thread is an article about the suicide. My username was just a few days before the winners. I lost hundreds of bucks, but I did get to watch someone spiral down for a year. Like I said before, it was exhilarating and well worth it. Who wouldn't pay a hundred bucks for front row seats to see someone end it? We all would. Humanity is a dark thing and I'm no exception. But the loss left a bad taste in my mouth. So I never placed another bet. I didn't even return to the forum for years until I noticed my couch was slightly out of place. Cold sweat beaded down my neck as I turned my computer on and fired up Tor for the first time since I was in high school. Finally found the site and there I was, a whole thread dedicated to me. I was chosen, but I have something others don't. I know what you're doing and I'll be there coming for you. To everybody that made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And if you didn't like it and you made it this far, feel free to dislike. I appreciate you watching, all of you. And I'll see you in the next video. Till next time.